How's it going? This is the OBS Quick Start Guide. I'm going to show you where to download the software, how to get it set up real fast. I'm going to give you a little demo and show you the workflow of the software, and I'm going to get you up and running for your live stream real fast. If you're interested in YouTube tools and techniques to make your channel grow faster, subscribe and click the bell so that you receive new notifications every Tuesday. I do the heavy duty research and you get the subscribers. All right, let's face it, OBS is a rocking software package. It's open source. People are contributing to it all the time. Live streaming is where it's at with YouTube. Everyone's doing it. Let's download the software and get it up and running. Go to Google and type in uh, obsproject.com. It's a blue website and click the uh, square at the top right underneath, underneath OBS Studio. If you have a Mac, click the Mac button. Windows, click the uh, Windows button. I have a Mac and I'll click that and the download will start immediately. Okay, uh, PC users will download a .exe file, double click that and install, and Mac users will have a .pkg file. Double click that and install. Installer is activating. Okay, continue, install. It's 368 megabytes in size. Putting my code in there, hit install. Okay, you'll get the inst installation was successful. Hit the close button, and uh, you can move the installer, the installer to the trash. That's what I typically do on a Mac. Probably has something similar on a PC. Let's go in and open up the program for the first time. Let's here it is here. I'll open it up. If it asks you during the installation process, doesn't look like it's going to do it here because I had it installed previously. It may ask you if it can um, conduct a test to test your speed and then set the settings automatically. If you go to Tools, if it doesn't ask you that, you can click the Auto Configuration Wizard. Tools, Subchoice, Auto Configuration Wizard. I'm gonna do it right now. And it's gonna say, specify what you want to use the program for. Nine times out of 10, we're gonna be streaming live, so you wanna select the first one, hit Next. Specify the desired video settings that you would like to use. Best Canvas Resolution, that's definitely what you want. Frames per second either 60 or 30 but prefer 60 when when possible yes definitely hit next please enter your stream information okay we're going to do that now we're going to go to the channel and grab our stream information okay this isn't rocket science by any stretch all you have to do is log into your channel select live streaming on the left and at the bottom of the stream now page you'll see an encoder setup field two of them server url and this and the stream name key do not reveal what your stream name key is to anyone, period. If they get access to it, they will be able to stream under your behalf. It, people have done it. Do not do that, okay? Copy that back over into the field here. The server URL and the stream key password, I guess is what you call it. Make sure that in the service pulldown that you select YouTube or YouTube Gaming, okay? And then hit Next. It says now final results. The program is now executing a set of tests to estimate the most ideal settings for your setup. This is what makes OBS so great. All right, per the test, they're giving me a bit rate of 2,500. Uh, streaming encoder is the software 264. Recording quality is same as the stream. We got a really pretty decent uh, resolution here. Uh, frames per second are 30, which isn't super great. Uh, output resolution is 1,151 by 647. Okay, I'll take that, you know, it's not too bad. I really have old software on my computer. This is a, a fairly intensive program in regards to the CPU and your GPU, which is your, your video card. So, yeah, I mean, depending on how old your computer is, you're gonna have a little bit more issues. But if you have a brand new computer with more than five cores and a lot of RAM and possibly a good GPU, you are gonna be in good shape. Okay, we're going to review some of the parts of OBS real quick so you get kind of a global perspective on things. We're going to start from the right-hand side and move to the left. The first area is the controls. Obviously, if you hit the exit button, it will close out the program. The settings button is what was just set up with the automatic detection software that, it, that test that it ran. Everything here is set up for you automatically, but you can dig into this after a while and, and tweak these settings to maybe get a little bit more clarity out of the system as you get more used to it. We have general parameters, streaming parameters. There's where we, you know, that's where you enter the uh, YouTube code. 
uh, output audio, video, hotkeys, animated. There's a lot to it. There's a lot of videos out there uh, that explain how to tweak this thing. We won't get into the depth of it right now. Uh, studio mode is pretty cool. Um, if you have screens, I have right now two scenes set up here, A and B. If we go into studio mode, what it does is it shows you on the left a staging screen, a non-live staging screen, and the screen on the right represents the actual live streaming screen. So you can prep, you can set up your, your A screen on the left and then hit the transition button and it just goes live. So it's, it's very, very helpful in regards to setting stuff up. Maybe sometimes you want to have a communication with people live and you want to maybe put their name up on a screen. You can set it up where you can type in their name here and hit transition and put it up all live, which that really makes your live stream really cool and slick. Uh, the start recording button basically uh, saves a hard copy of the video to your hard drive, okay? And obviously the streaming button as well will start the streaming. Now I have to tell you, you can click start recording and streaming at the same time, but it really taxes your computer in regards to processor uh, power. So unless you have a really powerful, you know, computer with maybe uh, eight cores or higher, right? And a lot of, a lot of RAM and a lot of a very powerful GPU, I wouldn't recommend that you click the, both those buttons. Okay, the next section is the scenes transition. Uh, the two standard ones that come with the installation initially off the bat are cut and fade. Now, if you hit the plus sign, there are more. You can do swipes, slides. I'll do slide here just for an example. It wants to know what you want to name it. You can just leave it as, as slide for now. And it opens up a screen and it gives you more options. Do you want to slide left, right, or up, you know, pretty cool. Hit OK. And now you have a new uh, parameter in that dropdown. This, in this case, it's slide. I'll just check that off. And now it slides. And so you have different options. You can slide it up, down, left, right, or whatever. And so there's quite a lot. It's pretty cool. The next section here is the mixer. And basically, it's obvious. It mixes the sound. Uh, the, the main concern here is to make sure that your sound is peaking in the yellow that's you know the best loudness if it goes if it's in the red a lot it's too much it'll probably get squashed green is is too soft yellow is best in my opinion it's up to you you can use the slider below it to adjust that so the next thing i want to talk about are scenes and sources this is the meat and potatoes of the program currently what you're looking at is i have two scenes a and b okay scene a is showing a, a screen with one source which is showing text with the letter A in it. Screen B is the same thing. It's got a source with text showing a B. Now, you, you can show much more than text. You can show um, images, okay, which include transparent pings, image slideshows, text tickers. You can show browser windows, and you can show computer screen windows in your sources and you can organize the sources because they're layers so you can change the layer order of all these media types that you put in there so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you just a little example of what you can do with this thing so that the light bulb goes off in your head and you feel a little bit more comfortable experimenting with the program on your own. Okay, The first thing we're going to do is add a video background for both scenes so I'm going to go to scene A and then go into sources for scene A here so scene A is blue I selected it hit the plus sign in sources and hit media source and then identify the source as background video okay hit OK then I'm gonna hit browse here select the video hit open and I'm gonna check off a loop because I, it's a loop I want it to loop forever hit OK and there it is and as you can see it's got it the video is housed in a red line with these little boxes just take the corner box if it's not as big as your working screen and stretch it out like I just did there. Now I'm going to do the same thing for screen for scene B because I want this video to be in both scenes. Okay, we're going to add some text sources to both of our scenes. Let's go into scene A and we'll hit the plus sign and select text or free type 2. And I will type in welcome to the show. And this is basically just identifying what's showing up in that source. It's not, it's not the actual text. Hit OK, and now select font, and I'm going to type in Earth here. So all you have to do is type in the font name. I'll hit Earth, and I will select the, most, the largest size and hit OK. And now I can type in what's, what I want to actually say here, which is welcome to the show. Scroll down a little bit. I'm going to change the color real quick from from this orange to yellow kind of look. 
and there we go, hit OK, hit OK there. And as you can see, it's really big. It's, it's better to go big and reduce it down to the size you want versus having it too small and bring it up to size because it can get kind of uh, fuzzy looking, which is not good. And there we go. Now I've already added text to scene B, so when we cl click over to scene B, it changes it out to a shout out to Emmanuel Goffey. My homie, Emmanuel Goffey. What is up, Emmanuel? I go back to scene A, scene B. See how it switches? Pretty cool, huh? All right. Now it's getting fun because we're going to insert a video feed. So go into scene A. I'm going to go to scene A. Hit the plus key. Select video capture device. And I'll type in Scott's video feed. I'll hit OK. And it prompts me to ask me what device. I have a C922 webcam. I'll hit that. Hit OK. And there's my webcam shot. I'll make that full screen. Because what I'd like to do is sort of just on this scene show my full, full wide screen. Now for scene B, I don't want to do that. Here I've already inserted the video. I'm going to take these, the, the red line here, I'm going to hit my option key and slide these down and crop the video down a little bit, okay? And move it over here to the left. That way I have more real estate for more stuff on the right hand side. All right. Okay, now we're going to add a browser window into the scene for source B. So we're going to go and hit the plus sign here and select browser and we'll just hit OK and I will type in paste in the URL here and we're gonna make it a little bit taller at 700 and I'll hit OK and it won't fill in right away but it will here it goes there it goes boom now I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and maybe just crop it in just a tad and there we have it awesome now I'll have you know you cannot click the buttons inside the screen but if you right click and select interact you'll get a pop-up and within this pop-up then you can actually select the links so that they actually change in the screen isn't that cool okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a chat feed into this scene now I'm not I'm not live streaming at the very moment so I can't use my own chat stream I'm gonna grab someone else's in order to do this you'd have to first start the live stream okay and then grab your own chat feed and put it into this into the scene but well, we're not gonna do that I'm gonna grab the chat stream from the SpaceX arrival uh, live stream right now that's going on at this very moment so I'm gonna grab the link I'll copy that I'll go back into OBS and I will hit the plus and we will select browser and I will hit chat stream Hit OK, and I'll put the link in there, and the width I want to be fairly thin because it's got to squeeze into this column here. So I'm going to make it 500 pixels wide, and I'm going to make it fairly tall. Uh, I'll make it, uh, I don't know, 900. We'll, we'll change the shape of it when we put it in here. We'll hit OK. It takes a little bit to fill in. Here it goes. Okay, there's the chat. We'll move it over here. We're going to hit our options button and scroll down and reduce the size of it here. Right like that. And we'll make it a little bit bigger so we can all see it. Awesome. Awesome stuff. There we go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. And let's bring that in just a tad. There we go. And that's it. There's how you put a chat in. It's pretty simple. Well, here are the two scenes. As you can see, we've got the widescreen and we have the chat with the preview screen for an individual website. And in this example, we got Emmanuel Goffey's channel up there. I hope this got sort of woke you up a little bit and got, got your brain juices moving in regards to how to work this thing. I have literally scratched the surface. I want to thank you very much for stopping by. I will be doing many, many more videos on OBS because it is just an absolute fantastic software package. I thank you very much for stopping by. This is Scott Victor from Blue Fox Creative. Stay strong and keep fighting. Take care.